So, um, think about cabbage, intro. Okay, cool. Hi guys, we're back at Cornell Farms Cafe. I'm Daniel Scout, and today we're gonna cover a little bit about cabbage. So one thing we love here about cabbage is that it's easy to grow, it's relatively inexpensive, and honestly we have some great farmers who get us a really awesome product. Um, so today we're gonna go over something that we like that's unique to us a little bit um, and kind of cover it more as cabbage as a condiment rather than as a main portion of the dish. Um, so we're gonna cover curtido. Essentially curtido is just like a condiment that um, Latin America uses on generally everything, everything from quesadillas to uh, tacos to papusas. It's kind of a catch-all. I'm gonna give you a little base recipe today, but I think we can elaborate it on it a little bit more. You can add things like pineapple, mango, papaya, things like that to give it some brightness and sweetness and make it a really nice summer condiment. So let's get started. All right, so we're gonna get started with just a little bit of shaved cabbage. All of the quantities that we're gonna be using for this recipe are gonna be down low in the description. A couple of jalapenos and a couple of serranos. We like our food spicy here, so we, we use a little bit more, but you can dial that uh, amount back. It's really just up to your personal preference. Next thing is onions. We're gonna go with red and white onions. We just like a little bit of diversity with the onions. Uh, I think red and white just gives it a little bit more umami. The next thing is carrots. Carrots are important, I think, to not be super shredded, but actually like julienne. If you don't want to take the time to do that, you're more than welcome to shred them. Next, we're going to go with a little bit of lime zest. I just like to add it, especially before we get started with the ferment. Um, I think that the ferment kind of comes out a little bit cleaner when you have that zestiness to it. The next thing we're going to go with is a little bit of cumin and coriander. I use equal parts. Um, next is salt. Salt is the most important of this whole thing. It's going to make everything come together really well. It is a bit of salt. You can reduce the amount. I would just recommend refrigerating it. And we're going to do a, uh, a room temperature ferment for a couple of days. So in with the salt. I'm going to get gloves so you don't touch your face later with some spicy chilies on it. So the key with this, you're essentially going to treat this like sauerkraut. So you're really going to kind of uh, mush the salt up in there and really let all of the natural water in the cabbage, in the carrot, um, in the chilies, in the onion, to all kind of come out and blend together. You'll even notice too, as you're, as you're crunching it in the bowl, you'll notice the color will start to blend together and it'll start to decrease in volume really quickly. You'll start to smell everything when you're crunching it. Um, you'll smell the jalapeno, you'll definitely smell the onion and the cabbage. And really we went from a full bowl to roughly half to a third. Um, there's quite a bit of liquid in the bottom already. So obviously, guys, this is it. There's really not much more to this, except for the ferment. Don't be scared, this is a lacto-ferment. It's very, very simple. Now, this is the part where you can kind of take it to a personal preference. We like to have ours a little bit more acidic, because um, then we brighten it when we're ready to serve it. So we typically like to go for a two to three day ferment. Um, right now it's about 62 degrees down here, I think, roughly. Sitting on the counter, two to three days, gonna be totally fine. You'll see a lot of liquid um, releases from the cabbage as it sits. So I just like to take a nice, excuse me, uh, nice clean sterilized jar and uh, a brand new lid. It's really important, it's a brand new lid, so it's not, uh, doesn't have anything in it. And we're just gonna pack the contents into here. We like to make sure it's nice and full because I'm taking a couple ramekins. You can take anything that's gonna fit inside of your ball container and just press it into the container. That way it uses its own weight to push it down. The liquid will um, go above the cabbage. You'll have a nice clean ferment. The last important part of this before you set it on your counter and forget about it for two days is do not tighten the lid all the way. Um, there is gonna be a little bit of natural CO2 releasing. So we wanna make sure that it has um, room to burp a little bit on the counter. So we'll just uh, tighten this down to hand tight. And then that's just gonna sit right on the counter. Um, we'll get back to it in like two days. All right, so it's been a couple days now and uh, we made a larger batch, but we wanted to show you guys the final product. So there's quite a bit of liquid that's released in here and it actually goes above the level of the cabbage. You'll see that as it sits on the counter inside of your jar. And this is the final product. We do exactly this. We just add a little bit of pineapples just to sweeten it up, add a little lime juice and a little sugar, and it's awesome on everything. 
And that's it, guys. That's a fun little condiment that you can kind of put on everything. Something simple, and it utilizes that cabbage that's probably been sitting in your fridge for a while.